This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Six forty-five. This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Here is a news edited by Danishka Madhavala and read by J. Yogaraj. First, the headlines: Sri Lanka will promote the COVID-19 inoculation drive. More than two thousand coronavirus cases reported yesterday. The government stressed that no fertilizer shortage in the country. All types of lunch sheets are to be banned. UNP leader Ranil Wickremesinghe will be sworn in. in the parliament today news overseas un afghan envoy devora lands alarmed at taliban gains in sports the first t20 international between england and sri lanka will be played today and those are the headlines sri lanka will promote the covid-19 inoculation drive with 2 million more doses of sinopharm vaccines are scheduled to reach the island by the first week of july State Minister Professor Channa Jayasumna says the forthcoming vaccine stock is a part of a purchase order placed by the State Pharmaceutical Corporation. Upon the receipt of uh, two more shipments of Sinopharm vaccines containing a total of two million vials in early June, Sri Lanka extended the national inoculation drive to twelve more districts and commenced the administration of the second dose. The epidemiology unit's progress report on COVID-19 immunizations showed that as many as 1.4 million people have received the first dose of Sinopharm vaccines, and 455,000 have been fully vaccinated with the China-made jabs second dose. The health ministry says 751 more persons have tested positive for COVID-19 yesterday, increasing the daily count of positive cases to 2,071. All new cases reported within the day have been associated with the New Year cluster. This brings the tally of confirmed infections of the coronavirus reported in the country so far to 243,891. As many as 209,296 recoveries and 2,704 deaths have been confirmed in Sri Lanka since the outbreak of the pandemic last week last year. According to official data, more than 31,000 active cases are currently under medical care at designated hospitals and treatment centres. This news comes to you from Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Get your EPF loan information and service details via SMS from HDFC Bank. Co-cabinet spokesman, Mass Media Minister K. Hale Rambukwela, yesterday stressed that there was no fertilizer shortage in the country, but said there may be an issue with regard to its distribution. The minister was responding to a question by a journalist at the Government Information Department to inform the decisions taken at this week's cabinet meeting. Co-cabinet spokesman, Plantation Minister Dr. Ramesh Patrana says the government has taken measures to strengthen the existing legal framework on fertilizer management and regulation in the country. Regulation of the Fertilizer Act Number no. Sixty Eight of Nineteen Eighty Eight was introduced to regulate the production, preparation, importation, distribution of fertilizer and relevant matters. But various problems have arisen due to the fact that the certain provisions of the Act are insufficient and do not meet the present requirements. In particular, since the necessary steps have been taken under Vistas of Prosperity, the national policy framework to implement the use of organic fertilizer totally in the country, the need to include relevant provisions in the Act has been identified. Minister of Environment Mahinda Amaravira has instructed the relevant officials of the ministry to take measures to ban all types of lunch sheets. Minister Mahinda Amaravira pointed out that former President Maithri Pal Sirisena, who served as the Minister of Minister of Environment in 2016, had taken steps to ban lunch sheets. However, the decision was not implemented properly. It has been estimated that Sri Lanka releases over 10 million lunch sheets in the environment per day. 
while lunch seeds decompose in the soil within two to three years, scientists have confirmed that the microplastic particles that accumulate in the soil due to lunch seeds last for over 200 years. UNP leader Ranil Vikramsinghe is scheduled to be sworn in before Speaker Mahindya Pabiyavardhana this morning. Uh, Sergeant at Arms Narendra Fernando said, Mr. Vikramsinghe, who is to be sworn in as a member of parliament, has been alerted the 13th front row on the side of opposition in the House. It has been reported that some government officials who did not report it or report to the service during the COVID travel restriction period have obtained transport allowance. Some executive officials are given many allowances, including transport and vehicle as well. Many activities in the countries were minimized during the past travel restriction period, but essential services were continued. In many government organizations, officials obtained transport allowance even without reporting to duty. There are more than 1.5 million state sector employees and around 5% of them are executives. They are receiving a transport allowance of more than 19,000 and 50,000 rupees of of a vehicle allowance as well. The government spends around 500 million rupees monthly, but some officials while obtaining vehicle allowance and transport allowance refrain to report to duty. But some officials reported to duty as usual without getting any official transport facility or additional allowance. That's local news. Now, get your EPF loan information and service details via SMS from HDFC Bank. Wherever you are, being a state and private sector employee, to obtain EPF loan information and service details. Just send a SMS mentioning EPF space name and region to 0718-800-999 HDFC Bank, the bank for your home. The main news story is brought to you by Siddha Lepa Vedamahatma. Foreign Minister Dinesh Gurvardhana in a telephone conversation held on Monday with the Indian External Affairs Minister said that the steps that both countries have taken so far to enhance bilateral relations between Sri Lanka and India have been fruitful. Foreign Minister Gunavardhana thanked the Indian External Affairs Minister for the financial assistance and COVID relief support extended by the Government of India to combat the pandemic. During the discussion, the two ministers agreed to work in collaboration with the regional organizations such as BIMSTEC and IORA. And that came to you in top news. <laughs> The main news story was brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamahatma. In Watchlight, people in the area are facing immense difficulties due to the dumping of garbage at several places on the road from Ahalikoda to the Hiovita. They said that people travelling in vehicles from other areas throw garbage on the road. And they said that in, although relevant officials have been informed about the issue, no solution has been taken so far. They request the relevant authorities to solve the problem as soon as possible. And that's Watchlight. And moving on to World News headlines. UN Afghan envoy Deborah Lyons alarmed at Taliban gains. Foreign aid watchdog criticizes the UK government over handling of spending cuts. Heavy fighting reported in Ethiopia's Tigray region. And those are the headlines of the World News. Taliban fighters have seized dozens of districts in Afghanistan as they step up attacks during the final withdrawal by foreign troops, the UN has warned. The insurgents have taken more than 50 of 370 districts since May, UN Special Envoy Deborah Lyons told the Security Council, warning of a dire scenarios. She said increased conflict means increased insecurity for many other countries near and far. The U.S. and NATO are still aiming for a complete troop pullout by 11th September. The U.K. Foreign Office has shown too little transparency and openness over its cuts to international development funding, a watchdog said. The aid budget has been reduced from 0.7% to 0.5% of national income, a difference of about 4 billion sterling pounds. The Independent Commission on Aid Impact said some cuts in funding for research on development had been made without consultation. Heavy fighting has broken out in several areas in Ethiopia's northern region of Tigray, 
between rebels and federal troops, reports say. The rebel Tigray Defence Force said it had seized several towns which witnesses have uh, told the BBC they have seen its fighters patrolling. The Federation Ethiopian, Ethiopian Army dismissed the claim, saying it was fake news. This is the most serious fighting since November when the Ethiopian government declared victory in the conflict. And that's world news. And moving on, moving on to development news, the Committee on Public Finance granted approval Monday to issue 1,000 billion Treasury bills under the Local Treasury Bills Ordinance, which is scheduled to be presented to Parliament for approval by the Minister of Finance. The Committee on Public Finance, uh, chaired by Andhra Priya Dashini Apa, met on Monday in Parliament. Government officials were connected online for the meeting in accordance with the health regulations given the prevailing uh, COVID-19 situation. Secretary to the Treasury, Ministry of Finance, Mr. Sar Artigala, expressing his views, stated that an increase of 3,000 billion rupees from the current limit of 2,000 billion rupees is thus expected. That's development news. And moving on to sports. Cricket. The first T20 international between England and Sri Lanka will be played at 11 p.m. Sri Lankan time today. The match will be played in Cardiff grounds. Since the start of 2019, England have won 16 T20 internationals to the eight they have lost. In the same period, Sri Lanka has lost 14, winning just five. England are the top-ranked T20 side, while Sri Lanka are at the eighth position. And that's Sports News. Contributory deposit of 1,000 rupees from NSB when your child enters grade 1. Open a Hapan Children's Service account for your kid today. Higher interest. Condition supply. Business News. Sponsored by National Savings Bank. The safest place for your money. More than 5 million people became millionaires across the world in 2020 despite economic damage from the COVID-19 pandemic. While many poor people became poorer, the number of millionaires increased by 5.2 million to 56.1 million globally, credit research found. In 2020, more than 1% of the adults worldwide were millionaires for the first time. Recovering stock markets and soaring house prices helped boost their wealth. And that's business news. Business news. Sponsored by National Savings Bank. The safest place for your money. Contributory deposit of 1,000 rupees from NSB when your child enters grade 1. Open a Hapan Children's Service account for your kid today. Higher interest. Conditions apply. In economic news, the European Commission has opened an investigation into whether Google is dominating the online advertising market at the expense of its rivals. It will examine Google's role in collecting data, selling advertising space and acting as an online advertising intermediary. The Commission is concerned the technology giant is making it hard for other online advertisers, advertisers to compete. Google has, Google has said it will cooperate with the inquiry and that's economic news weather report was sponsored by dialogue in partnership with the ministry of education introduces nanaser a trilingual educational mobile app with video based lessons for grade 1 to a levels now your child can study with ease on your mobile with no subscription fee the Mid Department says the showers or thunder showers will occur at times in western, central, Sabrigamu and southern provinces. Showers or thunder showers will occur in eastern and rural provinces and in Mulitiwi district in the evening or night. Several spaces of showers will occur in northwestern province. Fairly heavy falls, above 50 millimeters, can be expected at some places in western and Sabrigamu provinces and in Gaul and Mathura districts. Weather report was sponsored by Dialogue in partnership with the Ministry of Education introduces Nanaser, a trilingual educational mobile app with video based lessons for grade 1 to A levels. Now your child can study with ease on your mobile with no subscription fee. Before we conclude this news broadcast, let's look at the main points once again. Sri Lanka will promote the COVID 19 inoculation drive. More than 2,000 coronavirus cases reported yesterday.
the government stressed that no fertilizer shortage in the country. All types of lunch seeds are to be banned. UNP leader Ranil Vikram Singh will spawn in in the parliament today. News overseas, UN Afghan envoy Deborah Lyons alarmed at Taliban gates. In sports, the first T20 international between England and Sri Lanka will be played today. And with that, we conclude this morning news broadcast of Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation.